Hey everybody, it's Robert coming to you with another adventure into history. And on this video, we're going to talk about best practices for reading hard to read headstones. So if you regularly watch this channel, you're probably familiar with my method for reading what would be an otherwise very hard to read headstone. And I'm going to give you a few examples of that method today. But before I do that, I do want to touch on some of the other ways that people use to read headstones that are actually damaging to the headstone. And just like with any kind of exploration or adventuring, you want to leave no trace and you want to do no harm to the stone. I firmly believe that if you go to an old cemetery, especially an old abandoned cemetery, you should only leave the place looking better than you found it. And as I already said, do no harm. Now, many of the popular methods for reading headstones are actually very damaging to them. We'll start off with one that gets suggested to me a lot, but is a big no-no for reading a headstone, and that is flour. People put flour on the headstone, and while that does make it readable, the flour gets into the grooves of the engraving here. You wipe it off and you can read the stone. And while you're able to read the stone with that, Flour is actually damaging to a headstone. Now you would think it would just wash off with the rain, but the flour actually gets into the small pores of the stone. Like this one that I'm touching right now, if you run your fingers across it, you feel it's very rough. There's lots of little pores and imperfections in the stone. And the flour gets into those pores and imperfections of the stone. And not only does it expand when it's wet, which could cause the stone to crack, but it also feeds organisms that grow on the stone that can also eat and damage the stone. The second one that gets commonly suggested is shaving cream. Same method, you cover a headstone in shaving cream, wipe it off, and you think the next time it rains it just washes off. But shaving cream is also damaging to a stone because of the chemicals that are in it. Uh, it turns into essentially uh, like acid rain. Um, it has the same effect as acid rain does on a headstone. And of course, this also comes from long-term use, but if a bunch of people do that to a headstone to read it, uh, then it can cause eventual damage. Another method that's often suggested for reading a headstone is using chalk. And you chalk across and can read the letters. That one is also considered damaging because, for one, the chalk powder can get into the pores of the stone, just like the flour, but chalk is also abrasive to the headstone. So you don't want to do that method either. Now, another method is taking rubbing of a headstone. Now, generally speaking, that doesn't sound like a very harmful method, uh, but rubbing is actually banned in a lot of cemeteries because it also eventually wears the stone down as you go across it, rubbing it. And in some larger cemeteries where headstones have been rubbed a bunch of times, people have done a lot of rubbing over the years, the stone is almost completely smooth now because of that. So doing rubbings of headstones is actually banned in a lot of historic cemeteries. So as I started off saying, if we come to a historic cemetery, we want to leave no trace and do no harm. Even if you think, well, just this one time using flour or chalk or something like that on the headstone uh, won't hurt it just this once, you still, you don't want to go into a historic cemetery and do anything that will be detrimental to the life of the headstone. The best thing that you can do is use light to illuminate the headstone and then be able to read it. And I'll give you a couple examples of that. So here we have this headstone, and from this angle right here, I can't read it. Now, this is not one of the worst that I've seen, but if we put a little bit of light on it, you can see that it perfectly shows up. Take a look at this one as well, and you can see how it perfectly lights up. Now, it's always good to have shade when you're doing this, because that if you have sun shining directly on the headstone, uh, maybe have somebody shadow you so you can use the light to illuminate the engraving. This one I cannot read at all. This stone has been battered by rain over the years and the engraving has really been damaged and is really hard to see. But still, with the light, we're able to 
mostly make it out. Now, another thing that you can do, everybody has a cell phone, so illuminate the stone and take pictures of it. And then you can play with the contrast of the picture. And sometimes just snapping a picture, you can see the writing a whole lot better. Oftentimes on my show, you'll hear me misread a stone that shows up perfectly on video. And that's because it shows up better on video than it does to the naked eye. Well, there's nothing on that side. And I think that this stone right here will be the greatest example of being able to illuminate a headstone and make it visible. This one, I cannot read at all here, but if we put a little bit of light on it, even though the engraving is definitely worn, we can actually read this stone. So I hope you have enjoyed this video and if you get out and check out old abandoned cemeteries and hard to read tombstones, I hope that this will help you out in doing that and also doing no harm to the tombstones that we see out here. Because again, as a preservationist, the number one thing is to do no harm to these stones and also ensure that they continue to survive for future generations as the historical books that they are. Oftentimes, again, I get comments suggesting harmful methods for reading headstones, and I always read these, and I'm like, no, absolutely not. Don't do that. But it's a lack of understanding. The, these different methods can actually do damage and do long-term damage to these stones. So I hope you've enjoyed. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you next time out in the woods on another adventure into history.